Hi, and welcome to Clear Studies. I'm your host, Bishop A. Reginald Littman. Be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss new episodes as they are loaded. I am so delighted to welcome you here. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Join my e-class. I'd love to send you a free PDF handout of today's lesson, along with wonderful discussion questions to help you dive deeper into your study. Send an email right now to clearstudies at gmail.com. Again, that's clearstudies at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and hit that bell notification so you'll be notified every time new content is loaded. We look forward to sharing with you every single week. And welcome back to our third episode on the life of Joseph. Today we look at the message from Joseph's battles, the message from Joseph's battles. In all of our lives, there will be battles, but there is a greater message that we can learn. And even as we look at the life of Joseph, we see letter A, that there is a message of hope, a message of hope. You know, if the early years of Joseph's life teach us anything, they teach us that your childhood does not have to ruin your life. On the same note, your past should never be allowed to define you. Just because you came up rough doesn't mean you have to live that way now. Just because you were raised around harsh words or even violent tempers does not mean that you have to use the same words and display the same temper. You can overcome your past by the help of God. Now, to look at how you act and say, well, that's just how I was raised, is a cop-out. People say, well, my mother was ill-natured and that's just how I am too. I cannot help myself. No, it's not just the way you are. It's how you choose to be. Others may say, well, my parents were negative and so I can't help it. No, it's not that you can't help it. It is how you choose to live your life. Some might say a bad temper runs in my family and I guess I come by it naturally. No, I'm sorry. There are holes in your story. It's not how you come naturally. It is how you choose to live your life now. To blame your actions on people in your past is nothing more than a smokescreen for a heart that refuses to repent of sin and to be changed by the power of God. You know, God would change you if you would let him do it. He would take the shackles off of your past and off of you forever if you would only allow him to do it. Your past should never be allowed to define who you are today. So we are out of excuses. God wants to change our lives so that we don't have to live in our past, but we can simply learn from our past and live out our potential. Think about it for a moment. What if people like Peter, Paul, King David, and even young King Josiah had adopted the attitude of people in our day and time? They all had pain. They all had problems. They all had issues in their past, but they all overcame them by the help of the Lord and rose above that which could have easily held them down and held them back. Let's move now to letter B. There was a message of home, a message of home. If we can take anything away from the home that Joseph was brought up in, it is the truth that our own homes should be sanctuaries of godliness. Every mother and father that is listening or watching right now should fall down before the Lord and ask for his help to make your home a home of hope and a godly home. It should be a place where Jesus rules, where his praises are heard, where he is Lord and where he is adored and where he is honored at all times and above all things. 
Our homes must be places where our children can hear the gospel and see it lived out. Our homes must be places where the Bible is read, the Bible is honored, the Bible is lived out. Our homes should be places of worship where Jesus is exalted. Our homes should be places where the voice of the Holy Spirit is able to speak to hearts and lead us in the right paths. Whether you have children or not, you ought to pray that same prayer at the end of the day. Lord, make my home a place of hope. Every home that makes up the church should stand as a shining beacon of light for Christ and his work in the world. Let us see. There is a message of help, a message of help. As we look at uh, Joseph's story and consider the problems that plagued the early years of Joseph's life, there's a great blessing that I can take away with me today, and I hope you can too. As you look back over the previous lessons and put it with this one, we can rejoice that God was able to take the ore of this young man's life, refine it, shape it into pure gold for his glory. I don't know about you, but that's a real blessing to me. And looking at Joseph from the outside and considering all of his problems and the dysfunction of his home, it would have been easy to conclude that he would amount to nothing. But God took this life and shaped him into one of the greatest men of the Bible. That's the power of grace at work in one's life. That is the power of God. And you know, it gives me great hope as a dad because I know that I make mistakes as we raise our son. It is a comfort to know that God can overcome my errors and still use my son in spite of me. It gives me hope as a pastor, because I see children growing up today with the deck literally stacked high against them. But it is a true comfort to know that God can work in their lives in spite of their problems. He can save them and use them. It gives me hope as a person as well. When I think of my own past and the baggage that I carry to this day, I am so encouraged about what I'm gaining as I share this study with you because we're understanding that God can use us in spite of what we are, where we have been, what we have seen, what has been done to us, and even what we have done. And I hope it gives you hope as well. When God went looking for an apostle to the Gentiles, he didn't look inside the church. God went to the most unlikely mind imaginable and dug out some ore that no one would have chosen. When God was finished refining and shaping that ore, it became the goal called the Apostle Paul. When God went to choose a new king for Israel, God didn't look in Saul's palace. God went to the most unlikely place, a mine called Bethlehem. And there he dug out some very unlikely ore. When God was finished refining and shaping that ore, he had David, a man, after God's own heart. When God sought a man to lead his people out of Egypt, he didn't choose the likely candidates. He went to an unlikely mine and dug out the ore of a washed up 80-year-old fugitive who was keeping his father-in-law's sheep didn't even have his own sheep as an octogenarian on social security. But when God finished refining and shaping that ore, we had Moses, the leader of the children of Israel and the one who is attributed with the first five books of the Old Testament. 
The Bible and the church is filled with so many stories just like those. God can take us in spite of what the world and the past has tried to do to us, and he can take our unlikely ore and shape it into valuable gold that he can use for his glory. Praise his holy name. Listen, if you've never trusted Jesus and he's dealing with your heart, you need to come to him and be saved. If by chance in these lessons up to this point, and we're just getting started, but if he's spoken to you about the life that you're living, you need to come and get your oar into his hands. If there are issues in your past that need to be reconciled, hey, that's all right. Bring it to Jesus. He specializes in dealing with ore that nobody else wants to work with. If you want to pray about how God can heal your home, I want to pray with you right now. If you're ready to stop making excuses for bad behavior and you're ready to become what the Lord can make you, I want you to come to the Lord right now in prayer. Whether it is for salvation or just for strength. Let's pray. God, thank you for caring so much about us that you would remind us that you deal with ore that nobody else knows how to deal with. Father, I pray for those who may be trusting you now for the first time as their Lord and Savior. I pray for those who may be in a backslidden state that are coming back to you. And I pray for those who are born again, bona fide believers, but yet need strength to overcome these tough times. Give them what they need right now. Work with the ore as we give ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I am so excited about you joining me and I'm so excited about the E-Class. You've got to join the E-Class. How do you do that? It's really simple. Send an email right now to clearstudies at gmail.com. Again, that's clearstudies at gmail.com. And we will link you in and you'll be included every week as new content is loaded and distributed to the E-Class. There are no questions that you have to ask in front of anybody or answer in front of anybody. It's just me and you. But there are lots of other people who are also taking part in this great E-Class. And send that email right now and we want to send you a free colorful PDF handout transcript of the teaching along with some very well-developed discussion questions that will help you probe deeper and apply these teachings to your everyday life. Hey, I love you. Be sure to subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification if you're on YouTube. And we thank you so much. Don't forget to check out the brand new podcast called Clear Studies. God has great things in store for you. I'll talk to you next week. Join my e-class. I'd love to send you a free PDF handout of today's lesson along with wonderful discussion questions to help you dive deeper in your study. Send an email right now to clearstudies at gmail.com. Again, that's clearstudies at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and hit that bell notification so you'll be notified every time new content is loaded. We look forward to sharing with you every single week.